he relentlessly pursued Mr. Nee, causing him to seek refuge by barging into the home occupied by Olivia's family. Undeterred and wholly unconcerned for the safety of others, he continued to shoot at Joseph Nee, firing into that family home. Olivia, just nine years old, heard the commotion from her bed. Unsurprisingly, she came downstairs to seek the comfort of her mother. Her last words were, Mum, I'm scared. In a terrible twist of fate, she had stepped directly into the line of fire. As her mother battled to keep the front door closed, the defendant fired a shot that passed straight through the door, then through Cheryl Corbell's wrist and into Olivia's chest, killing her. The defendant then managed to get his hand inside the door and fired another shot inside the house. Fortunately, the door was closed on his hand and the bullet discharged into the door frame, avoiding the people inside. For the murder of Olivia, there is only one sentence that can be passed. That is a mandatory life sentence. Let there be no misunderstanding about this. The sentence will be one of life imprisonment. That means that the defendant may spend the rest of his days in prison. However, for reasons I shall explain, this is not a case which requires a whole life order. I must therefore specify the minimum term which must elapse before the defendant can apply to be released on licence. That is the shortest period that he will be required to serve in prison. There is no guarantee that he will in fact be released at that stage. That will be a matter for the parole board. I will specify sentences for the other offences, but they will be served concurrently with the sentence for murder, which will reflect the totality of the offending. The killing of Olivia Pratt Corbell is an offence that shocked not only the city of Liverpool, but the nation. Olivia's name is likely to be remembered for many years. She should not be remembered only for her dreadful last moments. Her family have spoken today of Olivia in life and of the hopes and dreams for her future, which were so cruelly snatched away. It is plain that Olivia was a lovely little girl who cared for others and brightened the lives of her family and friends. They have suffered an unimaginable loss, which they must carry for the rest of their lives. Nothing I say or do today will ease that, but they should know that they have my sympathy. The mental scars from that night will persist forever. Cheryl Corbell must also bear the physical scars on her wrist and hand. She must have suffered terrible pain as the bullet passed through her body but her bravery and strength is obvious. She had fought to keep the trouble outside and she ignored the pain as she desperately tried to save Olivia. The need for her to receive emergency treatment meant that she could not be with her daughter when she died. Nobody suggests that the defendant intended to kill Olivia or to harm Cheryl. But even if he did not know Olivia was in the firing line, the same cannot be said about Cheryl. She opened her door and stepped outside to see what was happening. She immediately recognised the gravity of the situation and hurried back to get inside and secure her home. It will have been apparent to the defendant that she was not connected with Joseph Nee and was trying to keep him out. He knew, therefore, that a wholly innocent woman was by the door and yet that is where he chose to take aim. Had he paused to think for one moment, it would have been obvious that this was a family home and that others, perhaps including children, were at risk. But the defendant was focused only on the murder of Joseph Nee, and no one else mattered to him. Precisely what lay behind the attempt on Joseph Nee's life has not emerged. The court did not hear from him, and the defendant was certainly not willing to share the truth. On his own evidence, the defendant led a criminal lifestyle 
in the course of which he was prepared to use threats and violence. Mr Nee was a man with enemies who had been shot at previously. That provides the context for what happened. Whatever Mr Nee may have done, it plainly did not justify the attempt on his life. He suffered serious injuries and is lucky to be alive. After things went so tragically wrong, the defendant went to the home of the woman who was brave enough to come to court to give evidence against him. I have made an order granting her lifelong anonymity and will not name her now. Her evidence was significant, as they both realised. She chose to do the right thing. The defendant invented a defence designed to humiliate and undermine her. It did not work. She was subjected to lengthy questioning about the most intimate details, but she stood firm. I am sorry that she had to endure that, but endure it she did, and her courage is to be applauded. In sentencing for the murder of Olivia Pratt Corbell, I must follow the statutory provisions set out in Schedule 21 of the Sentencing Act 2020. Paragraph 2.2bA of Schedule 21 provides that the starting point for the murder of a child involving a substantial degree of planning or premeditation is a whole life order. I have considered whether that applies to this case, but have concluded it does not because the planning and premeditation was not directed at the child.